Hey, friendly neighborhood immunologist here. And today we're talking about elephants. Because elephants almost never get cancer. As opposed to people, one in three people is going to have cancer over the course of their lifetime. So what makes elephants special? Why don't they get cancer? And how could we potentially apply this to treating people in the future? Let's get started. Okay, so here we have a human cell, and here we have an elephant cell. So let's pretend that this is actually a very lucky human, and this human has an elephant best friend. So lucky. Okay, so the human and the elephant go out to play in the sun, and they have so much fun in the sun that they forget to put on sunscreen, and they both get a sunburn. And now you might be thinking, wait, can elephants get sunburn? The answer is yes. Elephants actually frequently put sand and or mud on their bodies to prevent themselves from getting sunburn. So it's true, it can really happen. All right, so too much fun in the sun equals a sunburn. But what is a sunburn? A sunburn is ultraviolet radiation from the sun. And ultraviolet radiation from the sun can actually enter all the way into a deep part of your cells called the nucleus. So the nucleus is actually where you contain your DNA. Here it is, right here. Now your DNA is actually composed of only four different units. Those four different units are called nucleotide base pairs. And typically they are letters. They're represented by the letters A, paired with the letter T, or it's the letter C. Let's, let's switch colors, actually. The letter C paired with the letter G. So it's kind of incredible that your DNA is really just a different combination of four different base pairs, but it's true. It encodes all of us. All right, so now I told you there was ultraviolet radiation penetrating the nucleus. And if there's ever T's next to each other, the ultraviolet radiation can cause them to bind and fuse in an unhealthy and dangerous way. It literally just like misshapes and kinks out the DNA. And these are actually called thymidine. T stands for thymidine, thymidine dimers. All right, so this red here is indicating that they've been fused together and they're actually causing the DNA to bend or kink. So your body detects this and it sends out the hero of this video, P53. P53 is a tumor suppressing protein. In fact, in people who have cancer, 50% of them have some type of a mutation in P53 because it's that important in stopping cancer. So P53 can start two things, door number one, and we have door number two. Door number one is cell cycle, gonna have to draw through this, arrest. It literally says stop, stop. You cannot divide right now. I've detected that something is wrong. Number two is cell death. So this is definitely the more extreme reaction, but P53 can cause either of these to occur. Now P53 needs to be turned on. It's turned on by ultraviolet radiation. So I just added a tiny little P here. This P is a phosphate group. You might remember it from the table of elements. And this is the on and off switch. So there's lots of different proteins in your body that can be turned on by a phosphate and then turned off. So there's other proteins in the cell. Their whole job is to add and remove phosphate groups and it turns your body into basically like a light switch. So P53 is on. If you wanna flip it off, you just remove the phosphate group. So here, P53 is on. Let's check out program number one, cell cycle arrest. All right, so P53 is going to enter the nucleus. That's where it can interact with your DNA. Now here, I'm gonna draw P53 interacting with your DNA. 
Now let's look at option number one, as I mentioned. P53 can cause genetic changes in your DNA. So this one's going to cause a gene called P51 to create uh, a protein, sorry, P21. Here we go. Now P21 is going to stop your cell from dividing. Stop dividing. And then what's going to happen next is nucleotide excision repair. Getting a little tight in here. Nucleotide excision repair. Now what that means is your body is going to try and fix these two T's right here. Remember the two T's that were fused together in an unhealthy way by the ultraviolet radiation? Well now your body's going to try and replace them with healthy T's and that's going to happen some of the time. But unfortunately, perhaps sometimes you might get one healthy T and then maybe due to an accident, you might get a G here. And now this could be in somewhere unimportant, somewhere in your body that's not turned into a gene, and that would be okay. But this could be somewhere important in your body where this human cell has now acquired a mutation due to ultraviolet radiation. So honestly, door number one, cell cycle arrest is a little bit risky. So let's see what happens when P53 chooses cell death. It's different. It's creating a protein like before, but this one is called Bax. Now Bax has a very different job. Bax is actually going to look for a mitochondria. Now you might remember that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, but the mitochondria can actually also be the doom of the cell. Check it out. M-I-T-O. I always say mitochondria to remember to do that. This is your mitochondria. And if you look really closely, you can literally spell doom from the word mitochondria. So today, mitochondria is not the powerhouse of the cell. It is the doom of the cell because Bax is going to come along and it's gonna punch holes in the mitochondria cell wall. And when that happens, the mitochondria is going to start dumping out proteins. Now these proteins, let's come on down here, they're called cytocell, cytochrome C. Now that by itself doesn't sound all that exciting, but cytochrome C activates the scissors of the cell. The scissors are called caspase 9. Now, the scissors are going to run around and they are going to cut things. The scissors can actually cut things uh, both in the um, cytoplasm, but it can also enter the nucleus and start to cut up your DNA. So they can cut up DNA, they can cut up RNA, as well as protein. And what this means is your cell basically dies by a thousand cuts. And when your cell dies, that's called apoptosis. It is spelled apoptosis. You can say it however you like, but this is cell death. This is door number two that P53 can choose. All right, so now you know the two different things that P53 can do. You're ready to hear the elephant's secret. So the elephant has two secrets. Secret number one, it has 20 times more P53 than you do. And the second secret, elephant cells, they don't mess around. They almost always choose cell death. Door number two, choose cell death. So remember I told you 
that if p53 in a human cell chooses cell cycle arrest, nucleotide excision repair happens, and um, you can replace the fused T's with healthy T's, but occasionally they get replaced with something inappropriate, like a G or a C, and then you've got a mutation on your hands, and this cell will then continue to make copies of itself. So the elephant cell doesn't mess around. They have more p53 than you do, so if any of their um, copies of genes get disrupted, they've got 18, 19 more. Whereas if your p53 gets mutated, you're probably going to get cancer. All right, so let's check it out. P53 in the elephant cell, it's going to get phosphorylated uh, exactly like the human cell. It's going to enter the DNA, same thing. It's going to identify those, um, let's grab the blue really quick. It's gonna identify thymidine, thymidine dimers that happened due to the ultraviolet radiation. And it's going to kink out the DNA. But the elephant cells, they don't mess around. So P53 is going to activate cell death most of the time. Now it's not Bax exactly. They have their own. It's called LIF, L-I-F-6. And it's got a great name, Leukemia Inhibiting Factor. So you won't forget that this is how they stop tumors. But it's also going to find the mitochondria. So there's a lot of similarities here. It's going to find the mitochondria, just like Bax did. And then it's going to punch holes in it, just like Bax did. Uh, and then the next steps, hopefully, are going to start to sound familiar. Let me just finish drawing this orange. All right, so cytochrome C is released. Again, the doom of the cell comes from the mitochondria. And here, cytochrome C is released. Cyto C. And that's going to activate caspase 9. The scissors of the cell, which will run around, again, cutting your cell to shreds aka death by a thousand cuts. So there you have it. Uh, the elephants have 20 times more p53 than you and they choose cell death so that elephant cells don't ever accumulate the mutations the way humans do and they just really stop cancer from ever starting. All right, now you know the elephant secret. They have 20 times more tumor suppressing power than we do and when elephant cells are damaged, they just die. They undergo cell death or apoptosis. Our cells stick around, accumulating DNA damage to the point where they turn into cancer cells. And in the future, there are technologies such as CRISPR-Cas9 that would allow us to add more copies of P53 tumor suppressing gene to our own DNA. But that's definitely something for the future. And if you want to know right now, what does your immune system do to identify and fight cancer? I'll tell you all about that in the next video. So please like and subscribe, and uh, until then, stay healthy.